Welcome to the Diligent Woman Podcast, where Christian women let go of their guilt and step out in confidence by bringing God into every part of the day, learning by examples in scripture, applying simple principles, and trusting the Lord with it all. I am Angela Legg of thediligentwoman.com, and I welcome you to grow in grace and truth one step at a time. Let's get started. I'm so glad to have you here with me, and I hope that you will take a few minutes, listen to this podcast as we dive into some truths from scripture and find ways that they can help us each day to be more diligent in everything that we do for the Lord. So the question for today is, what is wisdom? It's something that we are told to get. It's an, you know, it's one of these things that's an obvious thing that we know that we need. In Proverbs 4, 7, It says, the beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom, and with all your acquiring, get understanding. So it doesn't really tell you what wisdom is. It just tells you that wisdom is to get wisdom, right? We have lots of definitions of English words like that, where the definition of the word is the word itself. What else does the Bible say about wisdom, and how do we use it, and how can it make an impact on our day. Over in Proverbs 8 and 11, it says, For wisdom is better than jewels, and all desirable things cannot compare with her. And throughout scripture, especially in the Proverbs, you'll see wisdom personified as a woman, and that this woman is going about doing something. And we are taught by God what wisdom is, this wisdom that we're to gain, we are taught what that wisdom is, what it does by the behavior that it brings about. Wisdom goes about the streets, giving opportunities and, you know, doing things for, to protect the, those who are naive, as we'll see in Proverbs chapter one. And she's constantly moving and providing opportunities for us to learn, to grow, to improve. And wisdom is gained in this way, and we're supposed to value it. So I wanted to look at three scriptures in particular, and these are taken from several of our scripture writing plans that we have about wisdom, because there are so many ways to study wisdom. In one way, it's a very broad topic. It's all those things that God has given to us. All of his word is wisdom, as Psalms 119 lays out. But it's what that wisdom does. It's seen the difference between the wisdom of God and the foolishness of the world. And so God tells us to get this wisdom, and then he tells us what it's going to accomplish in our lives. And we've got an example in Deuteronomy 4, verses 1 through 9, where Moses is telling Israel, he's getting ready to re- you go through the law again before they go into Canaan. And he's encouraging them to focus on this wisdom that God has given them. And in verse one, he says, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I am teaching you to perform, so that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord has done in the case of Baal Peor. For all the men who followed Baal Peor, the Lord your God has destroyed. He's destroyed them from among you. But you held fast to the Lord your God. You who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. See, I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do thus in the land when where you are entering to possess it. So keep and do them, for that is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people, for what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as is the Lord our God whenever we call on him? Or what great nation is there that has statutes and judgments as righteous as this whole law which I am setting before you today? Only give heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently, so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen, and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life, but make them known to your sons and your grandsons. 
Moses tells them, I've given you this law and I've given it to you to live by. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Just do what it says. And the result in this case is that the people around them when they get to Canaan will observe this nation and they will see that they are wise and understanding people. Living by God's law and living by his wisdom is seen by others and it has an impact and they will glorify God for it. And Moses says in verse seven, the obvious thing is, is for what great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord, our God, whenever we call on him, what other nation has a God that you can pray to who will respond that he answers your prayers? Whether it's yes or no or wait a while, God answers. And he's given us his word and he has he's put it down for us to read it and for us to do it because it's for our, our in our best interest. And so he tells the people, take this and live by it so that the world will see what a wise nation you are because of the God you serve. So the wisdom is living by the statutes and the judgments that God has given. And that wisdom is seen by others through the way you behave. So the knowledge and understanding is connected to the way we act. And if we go over to Proverbs chapter one, it's worded in a little bit different way. It's specific to the wisdom that is given in the Proverbs, this type of wisdom that's given these uh, singlets and couplets. And it says in Proverbs chapter one, verses one through seven, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction. This is what the Proverbs are being written for, correct? In verse, in verse two, to know wisdom and instruction. They're written so that we can discern the sayings of understanding, to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity. So just off the top, he says these proverbs are being given so that you know wisdom and instruction. You can discern the sayings of understanding. And you're going to be able to in receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity. So that you can act in these good ways. And then in verse 4, he goes on and he says that the, the, those proverbs are given to give prudence to the naive, to the youth, knowledge, and discretion. Would you say that those who are naive need some prudence? They need to be able to pay attention, have some wisdom about them so they don't get into trouble. They have to gain some of that. Youth often just run ahead without thinking. They need knowledge. They need discretion. These proverbs are given to give wisdom to accomplish that in the naive and the, and the young. And in verse five, a wise man will hear an increase in learning and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. This means the wise continue to learn. They understand that they need to learn more. They understand that they don't know it all. Wisdom is knowing you haven't reached the end of knowledge. And it's being able to say, I don't know the answer to that question. That's humility. That's wisdom to be able to say that. And wise men will hear and increase, and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. And why will they do this? In verse 6, to understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and the riddles. They're seeking to have understanding and get wise counsel so they can understand these proverbs and figures that are given. And in verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Again, we don't have wisdom defined as wisdom is dot, dot, dot. It's wisdom does. Wisdom acts this way. Wisdom is recognized when our behavior responds to instruction this way. This is what wisdom is. Wisdom is not knowledge. Wisdom is what you do with knowledge. Wisdom is not discernment. Wisdom is how you discern it and which choice you make. Do you make the wise choice or the foolish one? But you grow in discernment, you gain knowledge, you gain this information, and then wisdom becomes what is evident. But you can't separate wisdom from behavior. It's going to be reflected. And especially in this context, it's meant to bring 
positive influence to the naive and to the young. It's a protection to them, but you have to be seeking the wisdom, which is the point of verse five. It is something that will be heard and longed for and sought after. And then if we jump all the way over to the New Testament in the book of James, there's so many verses that we could read about wisdom in the in the New Testament as well. This is a lengthy study. If you want to do a word study on wisdom and understand wisdom, just go to an app that has the ability to search and just put a search for wisdom and search the whole Bible and see how many references come up. That English word of wisdom to come up. And then if you want to add to that wise and all of the versions of that word that could could be put out there, you could spend much time understanding the wisdom as God portrays it in scripture. And it would be to our benefit to do that, right? So what is wisdom? And in James 3, verses 17 and 18, he describes wisdom this way. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. God's wisdom from above creates an environment that is good for everyone it comes to. And the natural result of that is if you are walking and living by God's wisdom, those benefits come to you. You get to share in those. God's wisdom is pure. It's never going to lead you to sin. It will show you what sin is. The law makes the distinction. Sin is defined because of the law, because the law says this is right and this is wrong. So wisdom will tell you what sin is, but it doesn't lead you to do it. It doesn't encourage you into it. Anything that we do that goes against God's law that is sinful was not something we chose to do by wisdom. Because wisdom is pure and it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's reasonable. It is something that it makes sense whenever you think about it, whenever you connect it with all of these dots that are given in scripture, God's wisdom is reasonable. It fits in what we see in the world around us. When we look out at all of the creation, when we see these things, it fits. God's wisdom makes sense in that context. It makes sense in the context of where our lives fit in this whole span of time since the world's begun. God set the world in motion so each one of us could be here, could choose him if we wanted to, and then be lights that shine so others can see him. This is our purpose. This is why this is what he made us for. But he gave us the freedom to choose, and he wants us to choose him because of all that he's done. Acts 17 lays that out beautifully. But what is wisdom? This is kind of an age-old question. Philosophers talk about it. A lot. And God doesn't define it in these little black and white, you know, 10 word definitions. Wisdom behaves. And if you go to the Proverbs and you read the chapter after chapter after chapter that describes what wisdom will do, what benefits it will give, how it interacts with people, that wisdom is, is something that exists to protect us, that it is there to be there to show us the right way to do things. These are all things that we can see when we study wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what God has shown us and then doing what wisdom guides us to do in the short main. But that's not even a sufficient definition because it is so many things. And in your walk and trying to be a diligent woman, someone who is trying to live every day, You apply God's wisdom as you know it today. And you spend time in his word and you grow in it because you want to grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. And you're going to spend more time. And then tomorrow, the wisdom that you know tomorrow is going to be fed by what you learned the day before. And so your wisdom grows each day and your knowledge and that is nurtured through living this life that he's put us here to live. It is attainable knowledge, but it's never meant to be one and done. It's never meant to be this light bulb comes on and then there's nothing else to add to it. It is a process that is grown throughout 
all of our experiences. So the wisdom you have in the season of life when you're young and you're needing to have some discretion and some wisdom to apply to your life is completely different than the wisdom that you have 10 years later or 20 years later. Because you have been layering on wisdom upon wisdom as knowledge has come and you have learned from those experiences. So don't let your doubts about what you don't know now keep you from diving in to learn more. It's meant to be something that you layer one day on top of the next. You're not supposed to know it all. God has laid this out where it's meant to be something that you strive for every day and your perfect knowledge. God will take care of that in the end. When we go to heaven, that will be complete. What we need to know, we will know all of that. He's given us what we need, but he's made it where it's something for you to get bit by bit as you go through and walk through his word. But because he's told you to understand it, it means that you can. So I want to encourage you to dive in. Open this lovely book that you've been provided. All of this wisdom that God saw fit to write down that no other book on the planet written by multiple people is as cohesive as this one. Has as many things that go together. And there's a reason for that. We need to trust it and trust that God has given us what we need. But that I only have access to it if I'll study what he's given me. And like those kings of old that he encouraged them to learn by writing it out. Write out the law and carry it with you and study it every day. You do the same. Spend your time there. Don't feel guilty because you haven't read every single word yet. You don't understand all of it. You're not meant to. Because if God took all of these pages and all of these chapters to describe in a living way, what wisdom is, that's the same way that wisdom is supposed to be for you. So I want to encourage you, dive in, and then you will find as you're wearing all of your hats, as you do as a woman, as a warrior who is protecting the keep, the heart of the home, that this wisdom will apply in every situation you go into. It will apply to your marriage. It'll apply if you're single to your relationships with your employer. If you are self-employed and you are running a business and have other people, God's wisdom applies. The way that you treat others, the way that you handle your business, whether or not you're honest about your business. And then in the next season of your life, whatever it looks like, God's wisdom still applies. So dive in. Take some of these these scripture writing plans. I'll drop them down below the episode so that you can see those. And dive in and study this textbook that God has given you. No other book has survived the way this one has. And that has to mean something. It's hard for things that are good to survive in this world. They get worn out. They get broken down. They get thrown away. They get disregarded. And they get lost. But this has been sustained to this degree got a history it's got all of these things but this is here why is it allowed to be here with as many people who want to burn it up and throw it away and they don't want to regard it at all the world wants to get rid of that but it's managed to hang on let that bolster your faith in god that the god who created you and everything else in this world is able to give you what you need so that you can be in a right relationship with him And dive in and find wisdom and see if you can put an answer to what is wisdom. I'm going to leave it there today. Hope you enjoy it and we'll see you the next time. Bye. Thanks for joining me today on the Diligent Woman Podcast. Please subscribe to be notified of new episodes and share those with your friends. Until next time, enjoy. Enjoy.